Thomas Molesworth furniture to me exemplifies the West, but yet it has the refinement that it required to be successful nationwide, which he was. And it's fun. You look at one of these doors back here with this gunfighter going out the door. You know, what fun. This guy is an important designer. I bought this out of New York High Rises all the way to a camp in the Adirondacks. It fit everywhere perfectly. And the Bloom's house exemplified that. Here you walk into this setting, modern art next to Thomas Molesworth furniture in a very, very contemporary house. And it was great. Going there was one of the highlights of my life. And you know, the success to me in the furniture is the fact that it can go anywhere. It's not dated. My name is Terry Winchell, and I am here today to inspect this great collection of Molesworth furniture. I wrote a book on the subject, and it's been a big part of my life for the last uh, 30 years. I well remember the first time that I uh, met Jake and Ruth. They had this sense of showing up just when I'd bought some great stuff. They had an eye, and it was because they were art collectors. We've always been collectors. I mean, it's just part of our nature. We collected pottery, we collected dishes, we collected a lot of things. We started to build the Sun Valley home in 1996. We were looking for natural materials. I didn't want anything used there that wasn't natural to the West. Where we are in Idaho, it's called high desert. It's not the forest. People have horse ranches there and that sort of thing. The first Molesworth piece I bought was a small side chair that we saw in Greenwich Village at an antique store, and it just spoke to me. Once I started reading about it, I just realized that that work was so appropriate for us. Thomas Molesworth was born in Kansas, but his uh, father, who was an investor, bought a ranch near Billings, Montana, so he moved west. Tom was attending the Art Institute of Chicago with the hopes of being an artist when his father contacted him, told him, you're no Charlie Russell, so you need to come home. Molesworth moved back to Billings, Montana, got a job at Rowe Furniture Company. When he was in Billings, one of the places that Tom Molesworth liked to go was Fishtail, Montana. And there was a ranch there called the 4K, which stood for Keen's Cozy Cabin Club. I think that was Molesworth's early inspiration. He decided to move to Cody, Wyoming, and in Cody, he opened the Shoshone Furniture Company which initially was just a regular furniture business. He even sold coffins to uh, try and get through the tough days. About 1934, he was depressed, business was horrible, so he decided that he would make some rustic furniture, build a log cabin atmosphere, and put it in the front window of his store. A man by the name of Moses Sandenberg had just bought a piece of property a few days before in Sand Creek in Wyoming called Red Ranch A, and he came in and ordered about 500 pieces of furniture. That started his career with the Boost. Soon after that commission, he furnished the Plains Hotel, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and a few other hotels in the West. But the Plains in particular was a place where people from all over the country would come to the rodeo, Cheyenne Frontier Days, see this furniture, and then order it from Molesworth. He had an amazing network of department stores that sold his furniture. Abercrombie and Fitch having a window of Molesworth furniture in, you know, 1930s. That was a big deal for a guy from Wyoming. And this was shop-built furniture. There was nothing about it that was manufactured. He did these huge commissions and he got them done. And I think it would be hard to replicate today. One of my favorite pieces is the leather sofa with the back table. We bought them together. I'll tell you another part of what a lot of people don't realize about the Molesworth chairs. Not the sofas, but the chairs are reversible. So there's leather on one side and there's Native American design fabric on the other side. So it was versatile. The lamps with those amazingly curved burls. 
I mean, to see a burl in real life is not easy. And that's just another example of the beauty of nature. Molesworth allowed us to have the nature of the outdoors indoors. There's a couple of my favorites. One of them probably being the radio. I bought this collection from a steel magnet by the name of George Ragner, who had hired Molesworth to do the whole house. I saw this radio with these two great Kachina figures, which Molesworth probably painted with his own hand off of a Navajo rug. And every bit of it was great. I also love the game table and chairs, which actually came from the OTO Ranch originally, which was the first dude ranch in the West. Teddy Roosevelt stayed there. And I love the simplicity of the back of the chair where he had this Indian teepee with the door drawing you in. Great table with all this inlaid leather. And to see it in such great original condition, uh, you know, is amazing in itself. And sofa tables, although we didn't do a lot of them, are one of the most desirable things to find because they can go anywhere. Behind a sofa, along a wall, and all of the pieces I just talked about are all original leather and, you know, wonderful. Just like collecting the Molesworth was right for that house, the contemporary art was right for that house. I wouldn't even call it a contrast. The Molesworth complements both. It's timeless.